first sat down with this album, the goal always was to make the music tell more of a story, more so than the lyrics. And um, I think in turn by doing that, you know, by making these beats super vibrant, super worldly, I think we gave every, every artist featured an opportunity to play to their own strengths, you know, instead of me just dictating how the sound went. You know, I gave a lot of freedom, and it just comes together so cohesively, and it just paints this beautiful picture like, this is my life. Sometimes I gotta write it down Catching flights, I stay up above the clouds Clear vision, blurry vision, man I can't tell the difference I've been lost for so long The guy can feel the distance Hard-headed, slightly stuck This album draws from three of the most inspirational places in the world to me Those being Germany, London, and Brazil And, I mean, you can definitely hear that It's, it's a world album There's world production And I really, I made it my mission to make sure that each part of myself was represented in this, you know, each culture that that I I took pieces from and borrowed to make the sonic like sound. You know, I I really wanted to make sure that that sounded good and fluid and just work together, you know. I think with this album too, more things continuously change than they ever stay the same. You know, I can tell you that just like with passion and pain, nothing that I started with became the final product. To me, the beauty of these shorter albums is you can't miss a beat. Like, every song matters, every moment counts. Every little intricate detail plays into the story I wanna tell. And with filler, it just ruins that. You know, that's why I limited this album to 12 songs, you know, no more. And I think for the rest of, you know, whenever I make an album, I wanna keep it that way. Alright, so what was it like first meeting me? Uh, first meeting you was pretty cool because you were one of the first people that ever like messaged me after I released my first like EP. So I was like shook and I was like, oh my gosh, like he actually wants to work together. So I like dove into all your stuff um, and just wanted to do music with you and now we're here, so. What's like the favorite part about working on Dark Nights in Paradise or like anything else? Working on Dark Nights in Paradise, um, I'm not a beat maker, so it was all just, I guess, listening and uh, giving feedback, but Dark Nights in Paradise is definitely a conceptual, like, one of the conceptual, like, masterpieces, I think, that you made, and it doesn't 
have a lot of like ingenuine uh, things in it and that's what I really do like about it um, and a lot of it is uh, pretty fire so is there anything that you take away from this project now that it's finished is there any like I guess life lesson learned or anything that you uh, I think what I take away from anything in music, like what, like what I make or what you make and like that journey with it is like, there's always going to be like real emotions behind anything that is being made. And I think taking away from that is like this idea of dark nights in paradise is like something that you've like creatively like made and uh just think like to keep striving for different things because you're always going to get like those different ideas as time goes on in different parts of your life so i think it definitely is just a big encouragement to like keep going and that creative process of creating different forms of art uh, has been really awesome And this is December uh, 6th, and I'm playing the Star Wars Clone Wars called Rookies. I think growing up in Germany led me to this project. You know, just being around something so different from what the U.S. is like. I mean, it's hard not to get inspiration just thinking about it. It's hard, you know, not to ponder on it. I think, too, I try so hard to create these elaborate stories and these concepts in my music that I lose sight of what makes my songs what they are. And that's myself. You know, you lose a love for something when it's not fun anymore. And I think that's what was happening to my music. So I had to step back for a while and just let life happen. And in turn, it let me back to thinking about my music like the child version of me would think about it, you know, something fun. Amongst all that, I wanted to create something that, you know, the little kid in me would do. And I think he'd make something about his family, his home, things he was familiar with, you know, his life. You know, just, just his life. I mean, that's the simplest way for me to put it. So I really didn't initially think that he would go down the path of music. I noticed that he was left-handed, which usually indicates an art um, preference. And I noticed around the age of three or four that he really enjoyed certain songs. Uh, the louder he could to hear the drums would be good. He liked Eye of the Tiger and Imagine Dragons. And then when he was around eight or nine, he was interested in different instruments and he wanted to learn piano, and so he took it upon himself to learn the piano and to teach himself uh, the different notes and how they all went together. And then around age 10, I noticed that he had composed his first garage band song, that he had put all the sounds together and made the song to completion. proudest moment uh, watching Bryson do music is probably the first album that he released Passion and Pain and I thought it was amazing that he had spent just so much time and dedication and hard work in creating that album and then to see it go from the hours he put in on the computer to the actual CD that it was uh, created to designing the label for the album and then packaging it and then giving it to the local stores here for purchase. I thought that was an amazing moment and a moment that as a mom, I was super proud to see all the hard work and effort pay off.
people ask me if I miss passion and pain, you know, memories, that whole era. And to be honest, it's not really something that I miss, you know, not something that I necessarily miss. And um, I look back on it with fond memories, but I'm not living my life today trying to recreate that. You know, it's like, it was what it was. It grew me. I had fun. I made my history. But at the, like, at the end of the day, you know, that's all it is. And you know, I can't live every day trying to repeat that music or else I'll never make something, I'll never make something that I will like again. And um, you know, I'm not always gonna be around forever. You know, Bryce Wilson, the artist, isn't. And you know, while that artistic side of me is around, I'm gonna use the platform that I'm building and you know, that I have to inspire and you know, to talk about the struggles, but also to celebrate the successes. And you know, that's another thing that I hear in this album. Like, I hear optimism, I hear hope. You know, I hear a win. And I really, really hope that sound resonates with other people that listen to this because it took a while to get here. If I had to sum the album up in one word, it would be real. Yeah, that's what it is. It's real. Check one, two, one, two, let's go. Hoodies all summer, let's go. Melodically.